everybody, call me Felix, and this video is an epic luxury hotel buffet review in Metro Manila, and hence the long runtime. And this time we're at the Conrad Manila in Pasay, near Mall of Asia and SM by the Bay. We've been here before to review Conrad's award-winning fine dining Chinese restaurant, China Blue, last Christmas night, but we're here to review the Conrad's in-house buffet restaurant, Brasserie on 3. We're here for a weeknight dinner, and even before you sit down at Brasserie on 3, this buffet is a winner for its majestic location and views of Manila Bay. A little pro tip if you're here for dinner. Swing by around 5.30 to 6 p.m. just as the restaurant is opening. You'll be likely to wait for your table to be ready, but that's exactly what you want as that gives you free reign to stand by the alfresco dining area and watch the sunset. You'll get a similar view around the property such as the Conrad Lobby and the Sea Lounge, but from behind spectacular floor to ceiling glass windows. It was a great day to catch the sunset by the bay and hence why all the opening footage here is nothing but views of the Conrad and Manila Bay. On the views alone, you should definitely visit the Conrad and the neat thing is, with a bit of walking, the Conrad is adjoined to Mall of Asia. Magical as the views were, how was the food at Brasserie on 3? We'll get to that in a bit, but what surprised me most was the wide selection of appetizing items for a weeknight dinner at Brasserie on 3. And even though there is an a la carte menu, I felt it was unnecessary to delve into that as the selection depth was more than enough. Hence why this review ran on the long side, as I had plenty of stomach space to go round after round of food. On appearance, Brasserie on 3 looked every bit the part of a luxury buffet, serving up fresh enticing food with enough big ticket items even for a weeknight. Was the quality up to snuff too? Well, keep watching to find out. But first, let's hang out by the alfresco deck at Brasserie on 3. Alright, so this is my first time staying at the Conrad. Although, um, if you check one of my other reviews, an older review on China Blue on Christmas night, I was definitely here, so I'm pro tip. Anytime you're here, try to go to either Brasserie on 3 or um, Sea Lounge, where you can get some really strong drinks and some, I think, some good um, bar food as well. Um, come here like right on the golden hour, and then you're treated to this awesome view of Manila Bay. And then across the street is um, SM by the Bay Seaside. Um, they have this giant Ferris wheel, they have this pirate ship ride. Um, and I think you can also uh, take a cruise around Manila Bay if you're so inclined. Oh, there's a Montenegro fast ferry. I recognize those from um, Palawan, going from El Nido to Coron. So I kind of know the design of the boat or at least remember it. Um, yeah. And, and the other convenient thing, of course, is Mall of Asia is adjoined here. And by that bridge over there, you see that links up with SM by the seaside. So if you're like me and you wilt under the humidity, um, just know that there are uh, spots where you can be spared from the humidity when you go transporting anywhere. Okay. And then all the way down there south, that's where uh, Solaire and Okada are. And they're, um, they are doing a lot of development on that side of condos, especially near Solaire and Okada. Uh -huh. And I have no idea. I asked the waitress here, what is that mountain over there? Um, I am not geographically challenged, everybody, unlike the average American, but uh, I'm a little lost as to what that mountain is over there that the sun is setting there by the clouds and there. And there's a helicopter. Okay. But I know Corregidor Island is somewhere over there. Oh, on one note, um, I've been dining alone for the last couple of months because I've been hopping around hotels around Manila um, for basically a couple months now. Um, and it's because of the Funnel Cake Factory business and so on. And JP is not on with me on these travels because of that. So it's kind of funny. One of the um, Brasserie on 3 employees was saying, do you need somebody to talk to? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, I'm really used to like dining alone. So the soup staff are really friendly just to ask, um, which I think is a kind of awkward question, but I, hey, the thought that counts, right? Um, but I don't know. I'm 
a loner by nature, so it's okay. I, I love dining alone. So I'm gonna. This is actually the first time I'm ever going to review anything um, in a restaurant by myself. So flying solo, I'm kind of excited. The first time to fly, fly solo. Okay, I am going to save some battery on my camera, so I'm just use my iPhone to show you what the buffet looks like here. All kinds of awesome looking cakes here. Dessert station. Mahama is. The Dinka. Ooh, crepes. Crepe station. Around the swing. Salad. Now we need that to survive. What's this? Everyone's lining up already. It's like 10 minutes into the buffet. And this is crispy pata, roasted chicken. It's like giving it the Peking duck treatment, isn't it? Yeah, crispy pata. Yeah, that would make me excited. Oh, that's a big lump of beef that they got there. Pasta station. Antipasto Corner. What else is here? Something on the floor. To the deck. Uh oh. Seafood cooking station. Soup for Sinigang. Beef Buolo. This looks like another Filipino station. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Look at that. Cute. Uh, How many pieces here? No, no. I'm not alone. Uh, Pizza over here. Then... There's lines for everything here already. I guess they're, people are just as hungry as I am. Um, sushi. That's what it looks like. Oh, prime rib. Oh, don't twist my arm then. Okay, let's get some food in us, shall we? Yes. All right, everyone. I got unbelievably hungry on my first round here. I don't know what I just picked up. Um, a lot of meat, basically. Um, as you saw, there are a ton of lines everywhere. And here I am outside just after sunset. Can't find a better view than that, can you? So. On that alone, this place is a winner. Um, I have here some lamb osobuco, some onion. There's some fish here, some white fish. I didn't know what it was because it didn't say, it said like potato or something. And then here's some chicken, roast chicken. And then crispy patas here. And then we have some prime rib. And I didn't get the liver sauce for the crispy pata. I got mushroom gravy for the prime rib. Mm. Okay. Um, so I said to get a couple slices. You know how good that is. Yeah. Um, now, this is not as bloody as if you remember that um, Hilton Manila um, Christmas dinner review. Um, it's definitely not as run uh, bloody. It almost looks like it's. Um, just about almost done. Um, but I can feel it's tender. Let's check out the tenderness test then. Uh, <laughs> let's do this with a spoon. Here we go. Yeah, go ahead. Let me take a little bit of that fat. Like I said, it's not as bloody as <laughs> the one we had at Hilton Manila. I mean, you know, that's your first way. Okay, dip some in that mushroom gravy. Put some, mm. spear some more, put some more mushroom gravy here. All right, there we go. First bite of the night, prime rib. You know, it's a little more done than I would have liked my prime rib, but this tastes still, it still tastes succulent. Um, tender roast beef. 
Um, not too fatty. So if you don't like it too fatty and you don't like it too bloody, this is a prime rib that I think will satisfy you. Um, you're gonna have to be generous and bathe it in that sauce. Give it a big old bath. Because it does taste a little bland. You're not as, you know, you know how like prime rib has that distinctive pepper crust and some of that wonderful black pepper flavor seeps through. Um, this is a teensy bit on the bland side. Mm. I'm still enjoying that though. Mm. Because it's tender, it's got that nice big beefy flavor. Just enough fat in there to make that tender. But yeah, it's really good prime rib. In spite, you know, me thinking, oh, it's not so, you know, done to the likeness that I like. Okay, I want some lamb osobuco. Mmm. Mmm. As you would expect, it was like lamb shank. It's been like braised for hours, and this is what it feels like. It's tender. It kind of has like a little bit of an herb. It definitely has more of an herbal flavor, almost like um, like a roasted green tea flavor for me. Mm. And the lamb itself is not gamey. I wish it had a little more vinous quality, but tender. Can't really complain about this as far as like that doneness in the flavor. Okay, let's go for some crispy pata. That's a big slab of skin here. Got a little bit of that oil from the osobuco. All right. Mm. The crackling is not as satisfying as I would have thought. As far as like a perfect crunch. It's like it's a little bit flabby for the fat. But it's got a good airiness about it in that skin. Um, there's a little bit, again, I don't know if I'm imagining it. There's like a little bit of like an herbal slight. I would even say like a citrusy note there. Not even getting to the kamanzi, not even getting to the liver sauce. Okay, there's the pata meat. Mm. It's a little dry. Unfortunately. So it looked really, really good when taking it out and kind of like given like the glass case treatment like a peeking duck and hanging it, which I thought was really cool. Um, decent, but I won't say it's anywhere verging on greatness. And here's some white fish. There's looks like some tomatoes and some peppers. I guess this is um, cooked like, it kind of looks like a Latin American fish dish. As stylistically as it goes. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like um, sashado but not like too laden with a ton of like tomato sauce so it feels light the fish was flaker than i thought i thought it was going to be a little dense makes me think this either i think it's mahi mahi maybe hmm. didn't say in the description but kind of has like the consistency of like mahi mahi or hey by the way look at the sunset here as well down. Okay, there you go. 
Mm. Yeah. It has like a light tomato salsa flavor, a little bit of cilantro. It almost has a profile of shoshado, just lighter. So, a Mexican-Filipino thing going for it. Mm. Let me get some of this chicken now. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is as far as like the flavoring. It kind of looks like soy sauce chicken. If I didn't know anything. Okay. Mm. Kind of like a soy honey chicken. That part of the thigh though seems a bit dry. Kind of like the crispy pata. It looks really good behind the glass case. Looks amazing. But a bit underwhelming as far as the doneness, the texture. But I like the flavor of that soy honey uh, marinade I'm detecting here. Okay, one round of food done as far as the reviewing goes. Let's get some more food. All right, we're in pasta round for round two. So we had a really good, well, a decent, let's say, decent um, first round with a good osobuco and then the prime rib. So, yeah, I would say good. I would say decent. Let's say good. It's still, everything's good. Um, there you go. Pretty much nightfall here by the seaside. And so, they had a made-to-order pasta station. They call it a live station. And I'm like, okay. Um, it, um, again, I didn't eat lunch, so this is kind of counterintuitive for me. Um, it's to fill up a little bit on pasta. Wow, okay. Um, of course, here we have here spaghetti carbonara and then spaghetti bolognese. Hey, okay. Bolognese. They have this big old generous meat sauce. It didn't even look like sauce, it's just like clumped up and ooh, look at that steam disseminating from there. Good. Let's roll it up. It's piping hot. Gonna cool this down a little bit. And then here we go. That bolognese is kind of more neutral. I like it kind of like a richer, vinous um, taste. Um, but it's not sour. Not too sour. Not sweet, of course. Not sweet. Um, it tastes really meaty. Not just because of how much meat is in here. But... Um, the pasta is almost like really suffused with meat already without even getting to the meat paste itself. So, and these feel like fresh noodles. It kind of a, a little bit of a bounce. It's not, it is al dente. So, yeah, this is pretty good. Now, personally, for me, I want a little more parmesan in there. Kind of give it um, a little more richness. And then. A little more creaminess. And speaking of creaminess, we have our pasta carbonara. Prosciutto. There's a little bit of mushroom here. Mm hmm. Let's swirl around a little bit. Okay. Right. By the way, that's what they do here. Like, you know, like every restaurant you go to and they always give you this TripAdvisor thing. Yeah. The reason why they rank so highly. Because they're very persistent about, um, especially if you like the food, and persistent feedback. Now, that can be a really good thing, or it's like, eh, people might overrate it. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason why we're here. Okay, pasta carbonara. There's a good saltiness there from the prosciutto. Um, Parmesan cheese, adequate, as far as like the taste. Um, for me, a little more coating from the sauce. <laughs> I hate being nitpicky, but um, that's what I am. Um, I wish it had a little more um, Parmesan richness. And a little bit, just a teensy more cream 
I think. And this is really solid. We're gonna have to go in for more food after this. Seafood laksa, then please. With all the stuff. This is here. Fish, crab. I don't like crab, everybody. Um, soup. Ooh, Thai duck curry. Is that Thai duck curry? I don't know. Goat caldereta. That's what that is. Right chicken, something. Hello. I don't look super. Hello, please. Man, wait your turn. Jeez. Okay, round three. We are in Soup City. So we went from Pasta Station to Soup City here. Um, we're kind of going out of pattern as far as how I typically attack buffets. But there you go. You cannot ignore one massive beef shank or bulalo and not try it. So this is what that is. And then I did know they had a laksa station here too. And not the first time we've had laksa from a buffet. Um, what was it Shangri-La and Marriott? There you go, and those were really, really good, and especially Shangri-La. Shangri-La, amazing. So let's put that to the side because again, Bulalo, in the battle of soups here, one must give priority to a massive beef shank. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that soup, for all the anxiousness that you think of Bulalo, it's really clean, actually, pretty clean, clean tasting. You can see the richness of like those, um, like the oiliness there, but you don't really feel like the oily sheen on your tongue. It's just like straight up soup broth. Um, still tastes beefy, so it's kind of like that right balance of what you want in Bulalo. Um, I prefer mine richer, as in a little more of like a buttery mouthfeel. But if you like a cleaner broth, this is basically for you. There's a little bit of um, a sour hit without even going to the calamansi yet. Just a teensy bit. Now, of course, bulalo, not like some broth that has fish sauce in there. So. It feels pretty balanced. There's not. It doesn't taste too salty either. Some of that vegetable. Hmm. That cabbage is nice and crisp. There's some juiciness in it too. It's like one of those um, supporting cast players in the bulalo. If it's a good cabbage. It should give you like a nice contrast and texture, um, either in smoothness or the crispness there. And then some of these uh, long beans. Mm. It's kind of a thin long bean. There's a crunch there. Um, it's a little thin, so basically it's like crunching through celery just a little bit. 
Oh, that doesn't make sense because celery is thick. Um, but you know the skin of a celery. Mm. Meat itself is pretty good too. I get another one. The meat for me though is a little too lean, or at least of what I got, unfortunately. So I have that big piece of shank. That's a little more lean than I like. Come on, number three, please be lucky. Yeah. A little more lean, more fibrous. Mm. I wish there was a little more tender fat though. Mm. Alright. Let's lick this soup clean. Ugh. Lick this soup. Lick this spoon clean. So we can have some of this velvety laksa. I'm sure it's velvety. I'm gonna attack that shrimp later. And usually they give this massive prawn that's just, just like sitting there and then just like boop, put it on top. Nice. What do we have here? Looks like we have some crab sticks. Some thin noodles here too. Bok choy, carrots. First of all, the broth. Gotta try out that broth. Hmm. It's very shrimpy. Like the like sweetness of the shrimp. Almost just seeping through and completely. This is a very nice shrimpy broth. Um, I like mine a little bit slightly thicker though, but it's creamy enough and definitely shrimpy. Shrimpy in a good way. Yeah, it's like a lot of shrimp heads went into that broth. So kudos to them. They got a lot of that head butter all the way in that soup. I wish there was a little more of a tingle of spice though um, to kind of balance things. It's a little too shrimpy for me, but it tastes really lovely. Nonetheless. Nonetheless. Let's get some of those um, cellophane noodles, shall we? Cellophane noodles. They Service here is very attentive, by the way. I mean, um, already knew that when we were at um, China Blue and Sea Lounge um, not too long ago. But the service here is very attentive, almost overly so. Um, but very attentive. Okay. It's nice cellophane noodles. There we go. Those noodles are really nice, al dente. Smooth. And yet they have like this bit of a, uh, not just a chew, it almost has like when you bite into it, it's just like like a rope that's been snapped in half. That kind of um, firmness. That's quite nice. You can slurp up a bunch. Look at the consistency of the thinness. Yeah, this is a pleasing bowl of laksa. Um, let me get into that shrimp a little bit later though. Okay, I went ahead and I Segmented my shrimp. Huzzah. Now, of course, I'm here alone, so nobody else is here to do it. Gotta do it myself. Um, like I was saying, I'm really looking forward to the shrimp head because the broth itself has a lot of like shrimp head essence. I can say. All right, there you go. Hmm. Yeah. There's a teensy bit of a bitterness though, but it's mainly sweet shrimp head butter. And you can tell like a lot of that shrimp head love went into that soup. And there's nothing like a little more right back into it. Um, yeah. The shrimp head, nice and buttery. Just a teensy, there's a little bit of a bitter edge though. That's okay. It's fine. Mm. But really enjoyable. Really good. Mm. 
Okay. Head there. <laughs> mm. Have a little wake there. All right. Trying to bite into our shrimp body. Let's put it, immerse it more into the soup. Take a few noodles with us too. All right. Just let's uh, let's just bite that in half. The shrimp though is not springy. It's a teensy bit mushy, which should be my telltale sign not to get the live seafood here. <laughs> but that's very, very frank. Um, for my liking, that body's a little mushy. Um, like I always tell you, what you want in some really good shrimp is to have a nice springiness and a sweetness, and yet there's a tenderness when you get to, like right down to the um well when you might get down to it right oh yeah this is only okay but the rest of this though the laksa is quite good flavor is good very shrimpy um there's some egg in here too remember that and then there's some of this um did i get to try some of that crab stick um or scallop or whatever it is <laughs> Um, a little translucent like a scallop. But it kind of looks like the shape of a crab stick. Mm. Okay. Crab stick, I think. How much has... It's like tteokbokki. Yeah, it's like a fish ball that's like tteokbokki. Tteokbokki? Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, is it my favorite laksa? Well, that title still belongs to Shangri-La. I mean, like, I was staying at Shangri-La recently, back at, um, BGC. You know, one of my first couple of blogs was at the High Street Cafe. Um, they're not operational for any meal except breakfast for guests. Um, but you can get their laksa off of room service. My god, once I got it last time off room service, even better than I remembered. Um, so this kind of has a long way to go but this is still a good lock song. I'm not saying it's bad at all I mean it's like makes me think about that wondrous lock so that I had at room service I, when we go back to Shangri-La the fort I stayed there twice already um, in recent weeks um, I will review that especially when High Street Cafe comes back um, um, for dinner yeah okay I have some of this egg There isn't really a in that soup yet, really. Okay. So when you're here at Brasserie on 3, go ahead and get some of this laksa. And that Bula Lo, well, you can't. And your carnivore especially. Gotta have it. Okay. Soup round, successful. Let's get some more food after this. <clears throat> okay, we're in round four. I didn't realize there was Korean food on this side, but it's a lot of salads. Honey salad. Apu Apu Kini Lao. That's not Korean. <laughs> Kini Lao. Yeah. Ah, sushi rolls. Yeah. Have rice. Maki roll. Ooh, grouper sashimi and salmon sashimi. But they don't have any of the tuna. So, usually I start buffets eating sushi, but. I kind of got, again, hunger got the better of me, so then I go... So, we need to take a little break from all the hearty stuff, so we're gonna get some sashimi. Can I get some grouper sashimi and salmon sashimi, please? Do you have any tuna by any chance or no? Uh, for tonight we have no tuna. Oh, uh, okay. You have your plate, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, round four. Round four is a light one. Um, <clears throat> I have here some salmon sashimi. Looks like really um, nice glistening orange, quite dark. 
And then the other side is grouper sashimi. And they have um, three types of assorted kimchi here. They have um, radish, cabbage, and uh, what's this other thing? It doesn't look like an eggplant, but it's uh, something. It's green. It doesn't look like it looks like panlang. Ah, <laughs> uh, panlang. Yeah, only Lucanos understand what panlang is. Okay. Um, let's have some salmon sashimi. Uh, let's move our wasabi around a bit. There we go. Mix it around. Yes. Have some salmon sashimi. Go. Hmm. It's fresh. It has like a really buttery texture. Um, it tastes a little aquiline for me. A little bit like a river of taste. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good, good salmon sashimi. Not the very best, but yeah, it's fresh. Um, it has more of a buttery texture than it is for me. Buttery as far as taste plus texture go. If that makes any sense. Mm. Okay. And we have here some grouper sashimi. Um, grouper is usually a really expensive fish. And I usually don't see this on the line. Very often. Um, oh yes. Shangri-La. Okay. It's hungry law again. Keeps popping up. Um, yeah. We have some beautiful looking translucent grouper sashimi. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's really firm and meaty fish. Not as buttery and dissolving like this one is. It has kind of a real chew to it. This grouper sashimi. Um, but it's very clean tasting, really fresh. Very neutral. As far as like the aqualine content or the aqualine taste. It doesn't taste sweet either. It's yeah, it's a really neutral fish that has a bit of chew. It's in the sashimi. Um yeah, it's um, it has more like a like a scallop texture, but like sashimi. You know what I mean? Like it's it's more meaty and fibrous, that sort of thing. Hmm. But thankfully, it's not fish. <laughs> I'm gonna be chewing that. Okay, I kind of feel like I'll be chewing that a lot. Okay. Mm, it's still in my mouth, everyone. It's, it's like it, it only inhales and I'm trying to break it down enough so I can get in, get in some cabbage kimchi. Cabbage kimchi. I think these are wheat. Mm. The one I'm pointing at right here. Yeah. Mm. I know right away I get that crunch in the cabbage and then a hit of the salt with just some, like um, a very short-lived red pepper spicy burst. Let's have some of that radish kimchi. Hmm. Crunching. Has some nice juice water content and juicy. Doesn't finish as spicy though. So it's kind of like um, a neutral red pepper taste, as it were. Um, cabbage is a little more short lived burst. Okay. I don't really remember what this is. A leak or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then the third type. Ah, oh, cucumber. Silly me. 
about? Cucumber. It's really all about the texture and the juiciness of the cucumber. Good sweetness too. I would say this is my favorite of the three, as far as kimchi goes. Just smooth, crispy, juicy, subtle spice, but nothing too crazy. Um, of course, this being a buffet and has to cater to everybody, the potency of the kimchi is not, you know, something that will get you going. You know what I mean? But quite tasty, refreshing round here. So I'm gonna finish all this. Let's get some more food afterward. I kind of feel like I got a real run in me. So you're gonna go for round five, round six, round seven. So back in a bit with more food. Maybe some heartier meat dishes, especially like that Thai duck curry I was looking at. All right, back in a bit, everyone. Okay, round five. This is gonna be the heavy hitting round because look at all these hearty dishes here. Um, some of which have descriptions, some of them don't. Um, there's some Thai duck curry that's over there, I suppose. That's called caldereta. This looks like some sort of spicy pork Korean dish. I don't know what this is. Anybody know what this is? No, no one will say. Um, and then what's this? It looks like adobo. I don't know, with green chilies and so on. What is this? You don't have, doesn't um, have a description? This one is um, lechon paxio. Oh, lechon paxio. Well, I didn't know. And then, uh, what's this? That's pork bulgogi. Oh, bulgogi. Oh, let's see. Okay. Like I said, heavy hitting round. Look at all these hearty dishes. My gosh, people. And then after this, I think this is what we go for dessert. Because once you see all of this, yeah, this looks like really heavy comfort food some of this and we're not going for rice because like I always say rice at a buffet you must be out of your mind duck curry love duck let me see if I can get some duck thigh in here mm hmm Some of the pep bell pepper is to break the monotony. You need some carrots in there. Add some snap and sweetness too. This looks like skin. Oh no, this looks like bone. Let's get an extra piece and hopefully it's a dark one. Dark meat. Yep. Okay. Good caldereta. I don't know about you guys at home, but looking at all this makes me feel like makes you already filled up. And then it's lechon paksu. I didn't know what this was. It was like the chili kind of looks like as if it was like Bicol Express, except it doesn't have anything that's like coconut milk in there. One has a big piece of bone there. Let's get some of those onions from there. Oh, no, not going any of those onions. Okay. That's it. That's it. Round five is just four dishes. And they're heavy hitting ones. All right, on we go. On we go. Now, at six o'clock when the dinner buffet started, this whole side was packed. And then basically at 7.30, only an hour and a half, it all filed out just as quick as they went yep early dinner for some people i mean that's like the old person's dinner right there <sighs> okay on we go out the door so if you're eating outside you gotta remember sometimes you gotta budge your own door sometimes but well, the service here is really good so i mean um sometimes you won't be budging your own door more than half the time okay so I already gave you the rundown as to what everything is because you and I together picked out the food um, as we went. And you remember, 
So it's the beginning of the night. We're just at sunset. Um, there were lines, lines. But then round four, and especially round five, um, there was nobody there. Nobody there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I dipped my spoon into some caldereta. Yes, goat caldereta. Here we go. Hmm. That goat does not gain me at all. Hmm. Cooked to the right consistency too. Just, even if it's lean, it's smoothly falling apart. And then it's more of a tomato bait. You really taste more of the tomato based sauce of the caldereta. Hmm. Now, of course, this does not really beat the stuff you have at, you know, what we did in Pidig. Um, if you remember, a couple of times we had a full goat to ourselves and we had caldereta out of that. Um, nothing can beat that. That's where as good caldereta is. Goes. But this is quite good. Quite good. Yeah. So, so I mean, out of this he these heavy dishes so far, the very first one with the cold caldereta, this is really quite good. Tender goat meat, not gamey. Um, it doesn't taste like beef either, in case you know. But it's just so gentle tasting. And then that light. You know, like more of like a tomato um, gravy, tomato gravy. Not too sweet, not too sour, not too pungent, but it's very noticeable. Very, um, really quite good. Mm. That carrot too, good firmness, but it's like disintegrating. It's always a good sign of a good, a good cooked carrot, a good stewed carrot. Hmm. I'm gonna have some pork bulgogi. Big old slivers of onion with that pork. There we go. It's a little more on the sweet soybean paste side. So definitely not as spicy or and as intimidating as it looks. The cabbage really, and the onions really cut into the richness of the meat and the richness of the soybean paste. So that's really welcome. It's more of a ground pork consistency rather than like shredded pork. That's the only thing I can knock about it. Because I think ground pork kind of lends a little more of a coarseness there. We would prefer something that's more shredded. But otherwise pretty good. The richness of these two dishes, I think, is starting to get to me. And we must save room for dessert, because the dessert stuff, I tell you now, looks like... I don't know if it looks super epic, but some of the things I saw, we gotta save room for. I don't know. Hmm, some of this duck.
There's like a muted kind of, you know, like I always say about Thai food, especially in Thailand, the thing that makes it so different compared to Thai food outside of um, Thailand is like the basil, the galongo, and the lemongrass. More defined. You get like half of that here. Um, and it's not really spicy. Mm. For me, it kind of tastes bland. The duck flavor and the duck richness is really muted too. So it doesn't really, you know. I would have expected more of a muscle and curry because you know how muscle and curry, it kind of complements well with like nuttiness and with like the kind of robust duck flavor. So you're either gonna pack more of a punch or yeah you gotta pack more of a punch in there or go with something a little more complimentary to the duck. I don't know about that green curry. Alright. Last but not least out of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and we must get to dessert really and make sure we don't fill ourselves or get too tired we must mm, we must let me try to get a piece of the lechon paksu that hasn't touched the caldereta so i can give you an honest review there's a lot of meat on them bones a lot of bones too Lechon Paksu. Now, one thing I don't really like about Lechon Paksu is that it's too sugary. Um, this is not that. Um, it doesn't taste like Mang Tomas either, so you know they made this <laughs> out, of, out of their own sauce. Um, how should I say this? Yeah, it's a really muted. I keep saying muted again. Um. Yeah. I think with all these other dishes, it's just like I'm getting a like rich, richness, richness overload. Despite the fact this doesn't taste super rich. Yeah, it has like a mellow liver sauce flavor. Could do with a little more pepper though. Okay. Those, that, those are the four dishes that are going to end the savory rounds for us. We're going to get dessert after this. Hey, down the home stretch we go. Dessert round. They left plenty of room for dessert. No big cheesecake. Mango mousse cake. I don't know what that is. That looks awesome. That thing looks like a Yule Log on its wedding day. Grape Station. Mm. Piece of grape. Hollow Hollow. And no, I wouldn't even know. That doesn't sound interesting to me. Part of the stuff. I really have all these things in chocolates. These chocolate things. Open it. Yes, you can. It's like some tart chocolate brittle. Just reached in there and got it. Whatever. I'm just gonna close that for now. I think the way to do this is have a little bit of chocolate and then have ourselves little bits of cake. This is mango mousse cake. It's very interactive, isn't it? We're gonna cut ourselves a cube. 
This thing is moving at the same time I'm doing it. Not exactly the sturdiest thing. Oh, it's gonna come off. It's graham cracker crust. That too. Yes, it's come off. Oh no. Uh, one must help it along. Yeah, upside down. There we go. Ooh, an egg tart. They don't look, they look really bent out of shape. I don't know if I want that. Then there's some no-bake cheesecake. Uh, we're gonna just have to use this, right? Oh, there's no pressure here. As you see, a little bit off. Looks like raspberry and ch chocolate? Okay, there we go. Looks like some strawberry cake with bits of chocolate on top. Uh, let's get ourselves the most attractive piece, shall we? Yes. No. Yes. Uh, wow, it's a very healthy chunk of cake. Yes. Yeah, it's like that. Just for that. We must help ourselves again to one of these things again. <laughs> Gentle operation. Yay! There we go. And then gotta wait for our crepes. And if we have room, we'll have some room for Pinoy desserts dessert bites I don't think so everyone look at all what we have here and we still got a crepe to look forward to all right out we go again out we go again <coughs> we right outside Okay, you already know what all this is because we picked this out, of course. And this is our blueberry crepe. Um, when I got this, I kind of made a face and I was like, it just kind of looks like lumpia wrapper and put, like <laughs> blueberry topping inside. Oh, um, okay. Um, I was thinking it was going to be a little more brown than this, you see? Hmm. Instead, it kind of looks like lumpia wrapper or um you know like those thick like 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 fresh lumpia wrapper yeah made out of like you know like those thicker rice flour patties yeah that's what this looks like mm. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I like the blueberries, of course, and it's nice and warm. Um, I don't know how I feel about the crepe itself, though. Um, you can see there it's almost like a like a spongy type of crepe. Um, I was thinking it was gonna be more, like I said, brown. And then you get like that satisfying, you know, um, browning from the pan, let's say, you know, when you have it, yeah, or like the, the sugar on top, like a crepe Suzette on, on any crepe, regardless of what you put the filling in. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. But let's get around our other desserts. This is some um, no baked cheesecake. Mm. Raspberry. 
Definitely strong raspberry flavor. And it kind of has a, a springiness to it. No baked cheesecake. Instead of it kind of like falling apart into like cream. Mm. One must have a bit of this chocolate brittle. Mm. It's not very sweet. It's not very sweet. It's um got that nice It's got that nice, you know, dark chocolate that's not too overbearing, whether in bitterness or you know, milkiness or um, sugariness. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, I don't feel it's luxurious though. Except for the, the the feel does feel luxurious though. Okay, mango mousse cake. Hmm. Mm. Definitely has like has more of like a tartness to it, like a cream cheese tartness. Yeah. Quite good. It almost has like a little bit of a kind of acidity as well. Like um, a lemon acidity. Hmm. Kind of reminds me a little bit of those lemon bars we had in Baraki, which were exceptional lemon bars. Okay. Strawberry roulade. Mm. It's both dense and airy, the strawberry cake, uh, roulade cake. More of like um, an airier Sara Lee pound cake. Mm. You're gonna have some of this like ube, I guess. It looks like ube. It's like, um, yeah, it's like a little bit of like a ube cookie on top. Mm. I'm not too wild about this roulade though. More of that chocolate brittle though. Hmm. Yes. I more like it. Okay, I try to finish as much as I can here. It's not that I'm getting full, it's more or less I'm getting tired. Um, <clears throat> maybe some ice cream in a bit. And then we'll talk about Brasserie on 3. The review. What kind of grade we're going to give it, right? Um, over some ice cream. How about that? Okay, back in a bit. Okay, last bite of the night. Just as I promised. Some ice cream. Uh, vanilla ice cream. Now usually I prefer chocolate ice cream. Um, their chocolate ice cream over here is blueberry. Um, and I think I had enough blueberry of my fill of blueberry on that weird crepe that look... <laughs> um, it's not a crepe I'm used to, everyone. That, that, that's like, that's like, um, making a crepe out of fresh lumpia wrapper. Okay, um, finish this off with vanilla ice cream and some chocolate medallions. And of course, I'm out here enjoying the view of SM by the Bay or Seaside, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I've never ridden on these rides, nor do I have interest in them. Um, but yeah, ice cream, of course, you can't lose. 
It's creamy. It doesn't have any of those dreaded ice crystals. It tastes mellow, though. Not really like a vanilla bean flavor. Not like anything very strong. All right. So, Brasserie on three dinner buffet review here at the beautiful Conrad Manila. I mean, um, as far as the best view in town, as, you know, of Manila Bay, this place is almost, you know, undisputed as far as the very best view. If you come here for this here, it's fantastic. Um, and they have really good, you know, food and drink here too. It's a really nice place to hang out. It's a really nice place to stay in. I'm only, I'm here for seven nights and this is the first night I feel like this place is really, really beautiful and really nice. Oh, thank you so much, green tea. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is a very beautiful hotel to stay in. I mean, that's, um, and like I told you, I was here before blogging about China Blue. Um, and that was such an awesome experience. Uh, maybe we do that again uh, while I'm here. Um, I need to make sure I have dining companions because you can't share Chinese food. You can't have Chinese food by yourself, in my opinion. Um, but you can go to a buffet by yourself and it's okay. Um, so Brasserie on three. I kind of went on another tangent because um, I was talking about how awesome the hotel is. Um, the food here is good. So, um, like I said, I don't like having to rate my um, buffet reviews but since you're in Manila um, okay um, I think I've done that before when I talked about Marriott um, Marriott Cafe is like the nadir of luxury hotel buffets I have experienced um, this, this is definitely not that um, um, it's absolutely a B tier buffet um, as far as like the very best, um, it doesn't come close though. So you're talking about Spiral Sunday Brunch and Finestra at Solaire. Oh, you've got to do Finestra at Solaire for Sunday Brunch. Uh, amazing value, amazing value for all the items that you're getting. Spiral is very, very more expensive, um, but it's well worth it. Um, I had dinner there recently a couple of weeks ago when I stayed there. And I'm proud, and I'm glad to say this food there is still really good. Um, I think even better than from what I remember. It's interestingly enough how the pandemic kind of um, forced the buffets in a way to up their game as far as making made-to-order food. Um, Shangri-La High Street Cafe does the best as far as like um, a lot of the buffets I encounter here in Manila are of like the high quality, low quantity um, concept. And I think they're the best at doing that. Um, and then, yeah, those are my top three. Um, those are the A tier buffets. Um, but this is a solid B here at the Brasserie at, on three. So um, trip advisor, it would be like a four out of five. That's pretty fair. Um, there aren't really any standout dishes for me, but you will not be disappointed at all like Marriott. Marriott is just shambolic of performances I've ever seen, um, especially for a luxury hotel. So you're going to find some good dishes here. For the most part, the average dish is really pretty good. Um, great! Mm, okay. Um, so I would say the Laksa, the Bulolo, come down here for that. Um, their lamb wosabuko is good. Their prime rib is good. Um, yeah, those are the dishes I think I really like the most. Um, get some of that cho dark chocolate brittle at the end, of course. Get some ice cream to cool yourself off, especially on a hot, humid night like this. Although, <clears throat> we're in late March. It's summer in the Philippines. Um, and you're saying, well, isn't it hot in the Philippines all year? Well, yes. And, okay, put it this way. <clears throat> It's unbearably hot in April and May here in this country. Unbearably hot. So, um, tonight we're getting a little more of a breeze, which is good. Um, that northeast monsoon is not really here. Um, so, it's, the nights are a little more humid than you think. But, relatively cool because, of course, we're by the bay. Very nice view. And, of course, that's the big plus about this place as well. Not just the food. is the location. The service. 
almost impeccable. You know, like, we're outside sweating out here. Gosh, I sweat a lot. Um, it just gave me a lot of tissue. <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> very, very attentive service here. So, uh, kudos to that. Um, you won't be disappointed when you come here. That's for sure. Um, just know that the buffet food is good. Um, will you find an Epicurean, like a Epicurean dining experience that rivals any? Eh, not really. Not really. But the view, the service, um, the above average quality of the food warrant coming here. If it's, um, at least you experience it once. Okay. <clears throat> so that about does it from this review on Brass Round 3. Um, I'm going to try to do more blogs around here at Conrad. Um, trying to do more hotel reviews in general. I keep forgetting to do them. Um, <laughs> especially I'm doing so many hotel runs. Um, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, and better yet, please subscribe for more uh, food and travel adventures to come. And um, till next time, keep cool but care. Remember, the empire never ended.